Hey, deserving listeners, it's just me today. I am going to talk about Naj. Naj is pronounced Naj. It is it is spelled N A G Y, like like Nagy or Nagy, but it's pronounced Naj. I've had many patron requests for many years, incidentally, to talk about Naj. He is an interesting character in the field of therapy, more specifically family therapy, and he's one of the greats, and he has a very specific theory that's actually quite interesting, and I think can be understood by lay people. It's not, it's not too complicated, and it, it has some interesting, very unique elements to it. He really had a way with language that, and a way with metaphor that I think really uh, makes his theory compelling to people, which is why I'm guessing a lot of patrons have been asking me to talk about it. Um, my relationship with Naj has gone back uh, 24 years uh, when I was first introduced to his theory in graduate school. And then after graduate school, when, when I became an instructor, I began lecturing about Naj right away. The classes I taught involved Naj right away. And so I've been lecturing about Naj for 22 years. In fact, my class that's currently running right now, uh, my family of origin class that I teach, all new, all first quarter students in the master's program at my university, Antioch University, Seattle, take this class called Family of Origin. And, and we talk about a small set of theories. Uh, one is, is my own brand of psychodynamic family therapy. Another is Bowenian therapy. We talk about Whitaker and Satir a little bit, but we mainly talk about Naj, Bowen, and object relations. So Naj is a is a big part of this very important class that we have at the university. He, I, you know, I was thinking about it, and I, I would say that he is one of the least known among the popular theorists. You know, there are thousands upon thousands of theorists, people who have stepped forward and published something saying that they have a new way of looking at psychology or psychotherapy. And I would say, I don't know, t back of the napkin, rough estimate, I would say eh, 50, p 50 of those people actually are still known to a majority of, uh, you know, like if you just collected 100 different psychotherapists and said, rattle off all the different theorists or major figures in psychotherapy that you know. Well, if I included, well, let's just keep it a theorist because there's major figures like Irvin Yalom, for example, but I wouldn't call Yalom a theorist, right? So, you know, Freud is a theorist, Jung, Adler, uh, you know, Bowen, Whitaker, Satir, Naj, these people are what I would call theorists, people who put forth a, a model of psychotherapy. And so I'd say there's probably a set of about 50 that are the most commonly uh, cited or referred to or included in psychotherapy books. And I would say Naj is, is in last place. Uh, it means he is in the top 0.001% of theorists who have ever, ever existed, but it also means that he's up against a lot of tough competition. So it's interesting because in family therapy theory books, Naj is included sometimes and sometimes not, which is interesting. So, so, but, uh, so I don't know why I'm telling you all that, but that's just part of the context here. Um, just in a nutshell, what he did is he condensed psychodynamic theor a theory, psychoanal psychoanalytic theory, because that's where he came from, and he combined it with system theory. Systems theory. He also combined some humanistic uh, ideas, and he he sort of interwove everything. So that's actually what I I have attempted to do throughout my career is integrate psychodynamic psychoanalytic theory with systems theory, and. I feel like that really explains people to me really well, my integration of it. It's my particular integration. I hope one day to publish it. I don't know. We'll see. I, I have some unpublished documents that I've typed up. But anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that mine is actually quite complicated. I, it's not, I, I try to keep it simple. I've simplified some things, but it's not easily understood. Whereas I think that Naj's theory is actually much easier understood, even though he is integrating the same two theories. 
I think there's something lost in the simplification, in, in my opinion, which is why I, I don't really adhere very closely to Naj. But, but I think it, it's a it, it it's a good integration, and I use it indirectly all the time. I, I'm never, or I'm rarely thinking, "Ooh, I'm using Naj right now." That's with my clients. It's pretty rare that I'm thinking explicitly about it. But if I thought about all my different practices and approaches and way of thinking about clients and and people in my personal life, Naj absolutely is there. It's just not an explicit thing. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about his life. I'm going to talk about his history. I'm going to talk about the theory, obviously. I'm going to talk about the critique of the theory, and I'm also going to talk about how I use Naj's contextual therapy model. Model, not model, model. Welcome to the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I am a therapist and a professor and a podcaster. This episode is just for patrons of the podcast, so if you're listening to this and you're not a patron of the podcast and you're listening to this on the regular podcast feed, this episode will end before the content begins. If you want to hear the full episode, you have to become a patron of the podcast by going to patreon.com. That's patreon.com. Go there, become a patron, and when you become a patron, you'll get access to this episode and hundreds of other episodes in which we do deep dives into various different topics. Uh, A lot of them are theory-related. And also, when you become a patron, you don't have to listen to a vast majority of the commercials, which might bother some people. And remember that a portion of your monthly pledge goes towards various charities that we support. (laughs) 